Hello, good day everyone. In this video, I want to show you a bit about the process coming up with the animation style of uh, the security robots in the project Heist. This is an initial design, which is a blocking of the, um, the security robot. And the robot, as you can see, uh, already has some properties that indicates a certain animation style. One of them, of course, is a clunky gun attachment. So also what we see here are bones that can only rotate in one axis. And this uh, limits us as animators, but also distincts the animation style for us to really make this robot uh, mechanical and not as fluent as a human. So we take these limitations into account when we go into animation and start establishing a style for it. Um, but before we go into animation, let's take a look at some reference that we uh, collected. Let's play this video here of the Boston Dynamic Robots. Uh, these are some test videos. And um, we use these videos to kind of like analyze how do they feel robotic. And that has to do with some small imperfections like how the robot is standing up here you see the legs are also coming up compared to a human where the legs would actually be more um, flexible and stay on the ground so the stiffness of the limbs makes the robot feel uh, a bit clunky so we try to look at these imperfections that make robots stand out compared to humans and implement that into our animation to feel like our robots are actually robots instead of humans. <laughs> One of the um, examples that we found very successful and would fit into the style of animation for our robot was IG-11 from The Mandalorian. It has a very mechanical feel to it, but still has the ability to move swiftly. And let's watch this clip right here especially where uh, we do a little bit of fighting. It's cool to see, despite its limitations, it becomes a very efficient killing machine. Very unnatural, but very mechanical. And even though it still has the proportions of a humanoid, it um, clearly feels like a robot. Now here's a scene from Chappie where they used uh, motion capturing to make the robots come alive. And one thing that we noticed while watching this is that it clearly feels like it's a human being. So let me show this shot right here. And you see all of these little nuances on walking, skidding a little bit, doing small hops. That is a very sophisticated robot. And that's not what we're aiming for. We're aiming for this more mechanical way of moving. And um, so so it's nice to, to also find uh, examples of the direction that we don't want to go. Now, another great example of finding the right balance between real life uh, robots and robots for entertainment value is a clip from Big Hero 6 where radio controlled robots are fighting against each other. And um, let me show you the clip first. And of course it's cinematography as well, very well done, but also animation wise, um, they really feel solid and took certain choices to enhance the storytelling. Now this is how radio control fighting robots look in real life. And despite the fact that the technology is fantastic, the fighting is less impressive. And that's where uh, at Disney they really took the creative liberty to make the fight more uh, immersive by changing some of the uh, style and pushing the animation towards something entertaining. In this first test, I didn't take account of any overshoot 
or mechanical behavior of uh, the head and simply let the computer do the interpolation to see how smooth transitions would look like. So let's take a look here. So in this second test, I um, did a similar motion transition of the head, but now with some pop and lock uh, secondary animation on top of things. And let's take a look at that. So with this motion, you get more of a sense of uh, the in irregularities of uh, how a robot would move in real life, like we saw on the Boston Dynamics robots, where even though they calculate the movement perfectly, there's always the battle going on with physics, where any overshoot or um, small imperfections are happening. This is a first walk cycle test. And um, with the arms swinging around, we felt like it still had that human element to it. And we wanted to even push it more towards mechanical robotic feel to it. So this is an updated walk cycle uh, where we held the hands stationary. And that kind of like already make, made it feel more mechanical. Here's a, a walk to stop test. Um, where we took into account some of the mechanics of, of the hips there going up and down and really have a little bit of overshoot and recoil motion when uh, stopping into standby mode. So here's an initial walk of the um, gun attachment and really make those hands feel stationary, but definitely have small reactions to the up and down motion of the torso which gives it really that kind of like mechanical feel and texture to it. What we also added is a little bit of up and down motion on the uh, chest area that gives us a little bit of give uh, when the body goes up and down. And here's the robot moving in world space, looking around to find a target. I tried a, a single shot firing motion where I took into account the recoil uh, of the gun onto the body. So whenever the gun is shooting, you see the body is reacting to it, but it's not like super organic. It feels a bit stiff, and that really gives us that um, robotic mechanical feel to it. Here is a similar test, but with burst shooting, and the same um, physics apply to the gun recoiling and that energy is being captured by the body itself, causing it to recoil as well. Now here's a pretty straightforward punch that goes more into realistic real world behavior. So in this test, I try to find the balance of make it believable that it's actually a robot having some very straightforward motion, but also adding some, some cool poses in there. Right here, for example, the spine is totally curled up, but within that, because it's uh, it has individual joints, we are able to rotate it individually and make this motion separate from the body, which also gives it a kind of mechanical feel to it. Even here on small adjustments like a body rotation, we have a little bit of overshoot on the hands, the, the, the gun, and even the body has a slight wobble to it. Thank you for watching, and we'll continue to explore the motion of these security robots along with other robots that will be part of the Heist project.